Okay, so this is Flame Monk Ubuntu uh, for Raspberry Pi 4, and if I click on the SBC Gaming Reddit, you can see this is where you can download it, and if you want to read any more about it, things like the password is in here, so username is Pi, password is MonkeyPi. So this is a 64-bit Ubuntu operating system based on Ubuntu Mate, uh, and it works with USB boot, so I'm running it from an SSD, you don't have to do anything to it, you just flash it to an SSD the same way you would an SD card and it works perfectly. If I go down the bottom here, so it's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, so it's a 64-bit operating system. It's got Vulkan support, um, but I did find that it didn't really improve PPSSPP for me. I thought it worked just as well or better on OpenGL. Uh, so switched from Mate to XFCE 4, uh, and it says themes made by Greyduck, uh, who, who also uh, is a key player on Twister OS. So updated box 86, added native Discord client. There's all sorts of things in here so you can read through and see what, what works for you. So let's just close that down and have a look at the operating system. Now if you want to change the, uh, the background, there is a Mac OS background which looks very nice as well, uh, which is this one. I've got my RetroPie uh, USB stick in here at the moment. Uh, but I have been playing around with my 4 terabyte drive, and I'll go through that in a different video, but it works very well with it. So here I've got a RetroPie mount folder, so that's where it's going to see my ROMs, because RetroPie is built in this. And much like Twister OS, this is fully loaded with all sorts of things that work well on the Pi. So you can see under Favorites, there's uh, a software store, and while that's loading up, so Terminal. Chromium with Widevine support, so things like Netflix are supported. Uh, and Disney Plus and things like that. So here's the, the app store that's there and you can check what's already installed uh, but just by clicking on that. But let's go back over to here and uh, go for all applications and go all the way down the list. So 64-bit RetroPie uh, is excellent to see in there. We've got Anbox which is uh, a way of running Android in a virtual machine I think is the way Anbox works. Um, but uh, I haven't really experimented much with that. So we've got Gparted in there to uh, expand your partition. I don't think you need to do it for this build, um, but I'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, Raspberry Pi Imager is already in there. You can see there's a full office suite there from LibreOffice. Uh, you can see a media center mentioned there as well. Software Boutique is on there, which comes with Ubuntu. Spotify is in there, all pre-installed. I haven't tried that. Uh, it supports Wine as well, so uh, emulation of older Windows, which is which works really well on Twister OS. So if we go to games, this is always a very strong part of Monka's builds. So I've already mentioned 64-bit RetroPie. Uh, so there's a DS emulator there. There's a GameCube and Wii emulator, DOSBox emulator, Lutris, which uh, was in the latest version of Twister, which is like a game management thing. I haven't really got to grips with it yet. I haven't really tried it properly yet, but I need to go through that at some point. Red Alert, which is one of my favourite games of all time. I absolutely love Red Alert. Uh, PPSSPP is a separate standalone emulator, although it is also in RetroPie. I did find the standalone one worked better. QJoyPad, which is a way of configuring your joypad to control games that work with things like mouse and keyboard. So you've got loads of configuration about your controller there. So RetroArch, Scum, which is for adventure games, a Sudoku game, and uh, also your mouse, which is the best Saturn emulator I always find. Uh, it tends to work really quite well. Actually, is PyKiss in here? It's usually there. Yeah, no PyKiss in there, that's interesting. Uh, it is more designed to work with, uh, with Raspberry Pi OS and Twister OS, but, uh, but certain things I've tried do work on Ubuntu, but uh, I can always install that and have a play around with that. So, You've got Discord links down the bottom here. Let's see what the file manager looks like. Yes, it looks very nice. It looks very sort of Windows 7, doesn't it? Uh, well, definitely very Windows 7 with this Windows 7 or Vista, that sort of era. But it's nice and snappy, especially on... I put it on a slow SD card uh, before, and I'm not sure if something went wrong with the installation, but it was rather slow. But putting it on this SSD, and it's only a cheap Kingdian 60 gig SSD, and I'll put a link in the description to it, um, but it does definitely work a lot better. So let's have a look at RetroPie. So just configure my controller. I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller, which I often do. So I did play with uh, N64. So GameCube is there. Uh, now I'm not sure how well this works uh, within RetroPie or if it even launches 
Yeah, I'm guessing it launches the separate program. And we've got two windows now, look. Now, I'm not sure if this is working with my controller or whether I need to configure it separately within the Dolphin emulator. Yeah, I haven't got any controls. It's not skipping anything at the moment. So I probably need to configure that separately. Although it looks, from that, it looks to be running pretty well. So let's quit out of that. Does that, oh, that takes you back into RetroPie, which is nice to see. So PlayStation is one of my favorites. Uh, so let's go for a bit of Destruction Derby 2. Ah, oh, so everything is shifted, uh, and this, I've changed my desktop resolution, so I was, it, it does default to 1080, so maybe you, I need to do a bit of configuration in that then. Let's quit out of that. So you can see various different things coming up in here, Sega 32, Super Nintendo, Wii, nice to see that in RetroPie, uh, Arcade, Jaguar, Dreamcast all sorts of things in there but let's do the individual ones so quit out of that and quit emulation station that will take us back to the desktop uh, so I've lowered the resolution to 720 just because it works better for gaming really um, at, uh, at 1080 I find that it slows down a lot of things so let's go to games and show Red Alert so I've shown Red Alert before on previous Monka builds and it does work very well and it looks great it's just great to play. This starts you off in the mix, doesn't it? So let's just get some people walking around just to open up our environment. Okay, so for some reason my screen capture cut out, but uh, the good thing about it is that I could put my SD card into the SD slot because I'm running from an SSD. And uh, that just means that uh, you've got a spare SD card slot. So I formatted it with Raspberry Pi Imager and now it's back onto screen capture. So let's switch back into screen capture. So I noticed as well that uh, Chromium and also Firefox is in here, which is nice to see. So you've got a bit of choice. Uh, I find Firefox a bit snappier, but Chromium tends to be smoother. So it depends what you're doing as to whether that works well. Uh, OBS Studio, I haven't tried yet and I haven't tried the Spotify. Oh, WPS Office as well. So there's two lots of Office on there. Gives you a lot of choice. Multimedia. So let's try a bit of PPSSPP. I always find it hard to uh, navigate to the USB stick. Uh, so, media was it? Yeah, USB. Oh, there we go and ROMs, PSP, like a bit of GTA, turn my speaker on. I like about PPSSPP is that you can uh, load the states or wherever you got to. So like this, look, I can go back. I think there's a fire engine around here somewhere. There is. Yeah, so PPSSPP is running nicely on this. Oh, a little bit of slowdown and a crash. Oh, and there's a nice, I saw the nice bike in here, which I hadn't seen before. Yeah, this one here, look. Rather flash looking. Be interested to see what that looks like in a higher resolution. So let's pop that up to, let's go over three times just to see what it looks like. It won't run well, look at that. So it does look does look rather nice, but we drop a lot of frames doing that. Okay, so PPSSPP working well. Just have a quick look at RetroPie. You can see it's picked up my ROMs. And uh, N64 I tried earlier on. 
Okay, so because I changed the resolution, I'm going to need to stop that. Yeah, because I changed the resolution, uh, it's not working as full screen now. So let's just quit out of Retropy. And change that resolution. Oh, no, I can't do it that way. So uh, settings, display. It's very easy to navigate around. It's a very familiar sort of OS. So 1920 by 1080. Okay, so I had to restart my screen capture because it doesn't like me changing resolution. So let's go back into RetroPie. There probably is a way of changing it in RetroPie, uh, but uh, the N64 was working fine on this. It was a bit choppy on the menus, but uh, it was working fine in the game. And I find my controller, um, the start, select, and Xbox button, which I usually use to quit out, doesn't seem to work, but Alt and F4 does on the keyboard, so uh, that quits me out of Emulation Station. Oh, it's a bit choppier actually. Oh, so before what I did was quit out and went. Um, I launched it by emulation station, so I think I'll do that because yeah, it's still a bit choppy and it's not enjoyable to play like that. So, OF4 quits me out of that. And let's quit and quit emulation station. Then, if I do OF4 again. Control Alt F4. Yeah, Control Alt F4 gets you back to this Pi login, and the login was Pi and Monka Pi. And now, if I do Emulation Station, I think Monka mentioned this on a previous build uh, that it was better to um, do it from the terminal or you know to quit out of the OS. So let's see what happens. This always seems to run a little bit faster out of it. Oh, and the audio's fine. So the audio was really choppy. I, I cut it out before because it was so choppy. But all the audio is fine uh, running it in this way. Yeah, much, much better. Oh, I didn't mean to do beginners. Oh well. Oh, it's a car one. Bit choppy on the music there, but I did find that before the in game bit was perfect. This looks cool. Oh, blimey, it's fast. Smooth, though. Apparently, this is beginner. Oh! Oh! Hey, this plays really well. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I would like to continue the race, but I'm sure you don't want to see me race the whole race. Although it'd be nice if I overtook the uh, first guy. Oh. Oh, he's there. Right, let's, let's assume that I was going to win. So, quit out of this. Ah, uh, so I don't know how to quit out of this now, because none of my controls work. Control up, delete. Alt and enter. Function Alt F4. If anybody knows, let me know uh, in the comments, because I can't actually quit out of that. So I think I'm going to have to switch it off to be able to get out of it. Okay, so I did switch it off to get out of it. I don't know how to quit out of that. Uh, I'm sure someone will know, uh, but uh, the last thing I was going to show is the README because I think there was a few, uh, so for HDMI audio set audio output to analog output in sound settings, if you want to install an APK, put your APK in Home Pi Open Anbox. Yeah, I need to have a look at that separately really. Install, type ADB install your APK, right now Anbox is proof of concept and not really stable, but it will run some light Android apps. For Netflix, you can use Chromium ARM HF Docker container, Box86, so it tells you how to use that. This build is based on various open source projects. Greetings to PyLabs, SBC Gaming, Discord, The Rexa Show, Wimpy's World, Leap ESP Video, Greyduck, and ETA Prime. 
have fun using this build. So thanks very much to Munka, thanks to everybody else who was involved. It's a great build and uh, really pleased to see it working with Ubuntu on an SSD with no stress. You don't have to do anything apart from just install it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.